This story of our international organization began over half a century ago. It has been shaped and formed by the events of history and the many people that have supported and made this work possible. Since our beginnings, we have spanned 15 countries on four continents. We are a small nonprofit approaching the big challenges of the world in a different way by leading with and trusting people to be the change makers in their own environments. To know more about how and why Concern America has evolved over 50 years, now made up of a growing community of people supporting and walking alongside us in this work, we went back and asked the question, how do we get here? Here are just some of the voices of our global community. Our story begins in 1972 with two young families in Stockton, California. I'm Peg Fairbrook. I'm from, I originally born in Ireland and got involved in Concern when I was about 20. And um, I am 83 years of age now. I was the last of eight of the Kennedy family in Dublin, Ireland. And I'm Paul Fairbrook. I was born in in August 21st, 1923. I'm 98 years old. I retired from UOP after 20 years as Director of Food Services and Housing. Well, my brother Lachlan, who formed the Irish start of Concern, um, my older brother Raymond was a Catholic priest who was stuck behind the barricade when Biafra fell and Father McDonoghy, who was a priest in that organization, um, was involved and we got to know him through my brother Raymond, and they were both a priests of the Holy Ghost Fathers, who were working in Nigeria, Bangladesh, at that particular time. Well, I'm Una Kennedy O'Farrell, sister of Father Raymond, one of the founders. Yeah. What I remember of the earliest stages is there was no concern. I mean, they really founded concern right there in our living room and I made the coffee and, and kept the kids out of the way. I had the young kids then, but we were all sort of involved. Mm -hmm. and a lot of it was for McDonough, he was such a special man you would do anything for it. Well, Paul had decided that we had done all we needed to do up here. And he was a man with a full-time job and I was teaching. So we saw it coming to an end from our point of view. And then Father Mick said, no, don't give me another six months. Don't close up the nonprofit organization. I'm glad it was good people, you know, good working people who were ready to put some effort in and came along and put the effort in. And kept it going. Kept it going, yeah. Kept it going all this time, definitely. How amazing it is that from a small idea with a concerned priest like Father Dohani and people who care, that made the difference. The seeds planted by the O'Farrells and the Fairbrooks were nurtured by the early supporters and dedicated folks like Father Mike Dohani. Concern began to expand its geographical reach and initiated its approach of sending field volunteers, nurses, doctors, engineers, nutritionists, and so many more to live and work in communities. Hi, my name is Keith West. I'm a professor uh, in the Department of International Health at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, where I have been since I left Concern as a volunteer from Bangladesh in 1978. In those years, and again in 1979, I went back after my MPH, uh, were formative. Uh, they were days where you felt overwhelmed, uh, but driven. There wasn't a single day that was not purposeful. Uh, the, the work of the Concern volunteers was just amazing. Concern America sent dozens of volunteers to Africa and Southeast Asia, including Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, Sudan, and Thailand. And in the early 1980s, 
we began sending volunteers to communities in Central America and Mexico impacted by civil wars and violence. This is Cliff. We served with concern as volunteers in the refugee camps in Quintana Roo, living in Maya Balam in early 1994 for about half a year. And then I continued on as the folks in the camps returned to Guatemala. I think the more serious and enduring memories would be things like the courses, like walking into some of the more rural communities with Jose and Elena, with Susan and John, with entering La Cooperativa, La Quetzal, with the returning refugees, returnees, um, the first large group to return to the north of Guatemala. Um, there are so many, so many memories. Um, and I think all of those things have affected me and made me a much better physician, pediatrician, community activist, um, human being, father. Um, I think those two and a half years volunteering with Concern America right after pediatric residency was one of the most wonderful and incredible and formative things that a community pediatrician could do. My name is Mike Farrell. I've been associated with the organization for 40 plus years. Um, and uh, uh, I'm proud to say so. My first, ex one of my first experiences in Central America was to uh, fly to Honduras, where there were two camps run by concerned volunteers, um, and um, and bring in uh, bring in some supplies. So we drove a truck into Mesa Verde camp uh, and later Coloman Cagua camp. Um, and saw again these extraordinary young people, American kids, in my view, who had the willingness and the courage to go down to this place where there were people suffering from war wounds and the trauma associated with the terrible going on in uh, warfare going on in El Salvador. So it was a little bit dicey, but Concern had volunteers there, as they always do. Hi there, my name is Pamela Bondi. I'm from Chicago and I worked in Quintana Roo, Mexico near the Belize-Mexico border from 1990 until 1992. Um, and my name is Mary Beth Fleury. I'm also from Chicago. Um, I worked in the same area. We were working in refugee camps with Guatemalan refugees um, and I worked there from 91 to 93. So the refugees had arrived at the camps following violence and trauma, losing family members and friends and their homes and livelihood. Despite this memory, not much before we met them, we were able to share the warmth of family, daily life, and hopes and dreams, including the eventual return to Guatemala. We were able to train the health promoters and the refugee midwives. I have a real deep respect for so many of, of the refugees that we worked with who did not have the benefit of formal education and yet became really very effective, knowledgeable, capable promoters, educators, and leaders um, dedicated to their communities. Um, it was really powerful to witness as well. As Concern America matured over the years, it became clear that what was missing in the communities of material poverty where we worked was opportunity. People had no opportunity for health care, clean water, education, uh, start up businesses that they could run themselves. These were the things that were re really missing from their communities. And the opportunity to be engaged in this work was also missing. Our model of community-centered development has a lasting impact 
transforming the lives of field volunteers and the communities themselves. And I think the impact of CONCERN is, is possible because CONCERN makes a long-term commitment to people and to communities and doesn't, doesn't try to, to implement projects that are short-term and have an endpoint that's, that's unrealistic. I think the biggest impact of CONCERN America is the fact that the work is transformative and they also learn how to cooperate with each other in the process. In other words, they learn how to build trust with each other. And that combination of learning a skill and having trust with the people you work with is the formula for people being empowered to lift themselves out of poverty. For me, part of the most important thing in this program and in this work has been the poder caminar junto con la gente, ver el crecimiento de, de los pueblos, ver el crecimiento de la educación, de la salud, cómo surgió de, de la nada. Hello, um, my name is Brian Good. I first uh, literally quite bumped into Concern America in 2001, and we had intermittent interactions. Um, and it wasn't until 2008 when I left my general pediatric pro uh, practice to become a more regular volunteer with Concern America. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, the impact of Concern has had on me. Um, it has given me such a different view of people, a different view of medicine um, and how to practice who like this idea that not I mean that not everyone has access to healthcare was a completely novel idea when I started this and so now to have the power to work with people and have them advance themselves and advance their communities to me is such a overwhelming uh, gift and so I think I'm going to bring that nugget forward. Hi, I'm Allison Plyer. I live in New Orleans and I was a concerned volunteer from 1993 to 95 in Guatemala. I worked with um, Mayan weaving cooperatives all over the country, about 13 different places. We lived in the capital, but worked all over with um, weaving cooperatives. And it was, um, it was truly amazing, you know, from Coban where the women lived in a very remote top of this mountain that the nuns would lead us to, and there they made the most beautiful, um, delicate huipiles. And then um, in Solola, um, where they had experienced so much violence and um, had, had and were so generous with their laughter um, despite all of that. Um, and then um, in, there were others in the city, other cooperatives in the city that had a lot more capacity and um, know-how, but we helped all of them all over the country uh, sell to fair trade outlets. The best memories or moments that I bring with me in my work with Concern and the communities, I think it's all the moments that I've seen the people in community after we finish the construction of a water project and you see the people smiling or crying every time they see the water comes through a tap uh, to be able to wash themselves, to cook, and not being obligated to walk long distance to carry the water for their use every day. So I think those are the best memories I, I, would, I will always bring with me. But I think my favorite good memory, even though it may not sound so good, is of the day we left in the midst of my sadness at leaving the people I had grown to love so dearly. There was also the reassurance that we were leaving them with a program that would continue, that those whom we had taught were now teachers, and that the communities were starting to be organized to work at improving their own health. That's what I appreciate most about Concern America. Its programs work to promote health care, not medical care, in a model that prepares folks to take care of themselves and their communities and supports them along the way. This model of community-centered healthcare can be seen in many places throughout the world, but Concern America took people-centered care to an entirely new level 
that we call health promoter practitioners. Community members, often with no more than a formal third grade education, are trained to be the primary health care providers in their communities. Over time, these same practitioners become leaders in their programs and the trainers themselves. My name is Macaria Matias Ortiz. I am from here, Guatemala. Eh, antes vivía en una comunidad de retornados que se llama Unión Maya Itza. Empecé de muy temprana edad, como empecé en el 1995, cuando entraron los retornos de, de las comunidades que fueron este, víctimas de la violencia que hubo aquí en Guatemala. ¿verdad? El tiempo de recuerdo más favorito que es cuando yo tengo que enseñar a, a algún promotor que llega a la clínica. Por ejemplo, si hay un grupo nuevo y yo tengo que enseñarles algo, por ejemplo, sutura, cómo poner los puntos, y eso me da mucha satisfacción de enseñar a ellos. Um, working with the team here has really impacted me in many ways. I love the care and time that they spend with their patients. I am trained in the U.S. as a physician assistant, but what I've been seeing and practicing here is a whole new level of, of care. It's really amazing to see the depths and lengths to which the promoters here go to make sure that their patients really get access to their medication, get follow-up, and get the services that they need, and as well as the education. One of my favorite Concern America memories is when um, two of the advanced promoters from Guate, Eva and Macaria, came to Rio Susio um, to teach courses and help support the promoters in the clinic. Um, and that is special because, um, you know, they're local Guatemalan women who learned and have practiced so much that, um, you know, they're viewed as sort of the experts and they came to teach local Colombians. So just a very cool exchange, um, not the typical uh, foreigner coming in teaching. Since the start of Concern America, the organization has been powered by the global hearts of a growing community committed to working towards a better world. From the newly trained healthcare provider to the long-term supporter, each participant plays an important role in carrying out this vision for healthcare, clean water, income opportunities, and education in every community. Despite the many challenges in our world today, the work of Concern America is one of hope and building for a better future for all. Considero que, que en el futuro, pues, ojalá también que hayan personas que que también vayan asumiendo más la responsabilidad de, de darle vida a este proceso, porque la salud no, no se va a mejorar mañana, sino que tanto como hemos visto, hay muchas enfermedades que, que nos han impactado a nosotros, especialmente ahora con lo de la pandemia, y entonces y para que esto dé el servicio muchos años, pues hay que preparar a mucha gente. Es que sigue este programa hacia adelante, para el servicio de todas las personas más lejanas, especialmente en las comunidades y en mi comunidad, y seguir trabajando aquí en el programa mientras Dios nos da vida y salud. Y también invitar a otros jóvenes a que, se, que ellos también se preparen, se capaciten para llevar adelante este programa en un futuro. Mi intención por la cual yo inicié acá es porque a mis 13 años tuve la inquietud de saber cómo era trabajar con un paciente, cómo diagnosticarlo y posteriormente medicarlo. Yo miraba que mi mamá daba la consulta, yo siempre me metía a escuchar qué decían, pero no le prestaba mayor importancia. En el año 2014 <coughs> tuve un pequeño incidente y tuve una fractura y ahí fue donde tuve la oportunidad de conocer a Julia. Julia eh, me explicó muy, muy, muy bonito la forma de cómo hacer un promotor, así brevemente, y ahí yo me enamoré del programa y de ser promotor. Me ha gustado mucho el tema de salud, me ha gustado mucho el tema de ayudar a los pacientes en todos los casos que me han presentado. 
uh, tengo mucho que aprender todavía y tengo mucho por desarrollar. Um, I would like to see CONCERN grow and bring health promoter practitioner model to more parts of the world where healthcare is needed. Um, I wish to see us um, uplifting more communities and bringing down barriers. Now that we are seeing the integration of young people from a second generation of promoters and midwives, I hope for a future where CONCERN America accompanies the work of a stronger and bigger group of multipliers all over Guatemala, Mexico, and Colombia. I hope for all of us to keep working together for many years to come. From the bottom of our global hearts, we thank all of you who walk with us. All of the field volunteers, founders, staff, board members, health promoter practitioners, midwives, water system builders, teachers, artisans, and the many supporters for growing with us. And to the next generation of Concern America, as they are the ones who are now changing the world. We just have nothing but being grateful and thankful and feeling what a blessing it has been in our life to be able to be part of this work that Concern America continues to do so magnificently. I am absolutely floored that it's 50 years since we started it. I'm delighted it's going so well and I hope there's another 50 years um, of success. And I feel exactly the same way and I'm delighted to have a chance to address everybody who is watching this video and uh, I appreciate the chance to participate in some very in your wonderful celebration. <laughs>